Chapter 7 The Peninsula Plateau Region Deccan We will study the following points in this chapter. 7.1 Physiography 7.2 Climate 7.3 Soils 7.4 Natural Vegetation and Animal Life 7.5 Population and Settlement 7.6 Economic Development which includes Agriculture Mining Industries Transportation Tourism 7.7 .7, Natural Hazards and Environmental Problems Seven point one Physiography The Deccan Plateau The triangular region to the south of Narmada is known as the Deccan Plateau. It is an inverted triangle with its base in the north and the apex in the south. The Satpuda range along with the Mahadev and Maikal hills form the broad base of this triangle. The triangular region to the south of Satpuda range comprises of a number of plateaus. The western and eastern ghats form the margins of the Deccan plateau. The Maharashtra plateau is mostly made up of basalt rocks of igneous origin. The basalt layer are almost horizontal and this gives an appearance of a step-like structure to the entire landscape. Hence these basaltic formations are called Deccan Trap. The Karnataka Telangana Plateau is chiefly made up of granite and granitic Nis rocks. The Karnataka Plateau is known as Maidan. The Deccan Plateau is divided into following sub-regions. 1. Satpuda Mahadev, Maikal Range 2. Maharashtra Plateau 3. Karnataka Telangana Plateau 4. Eastern Plateaus Number 1. Satpuda Mahadev, Maikal Range this is a group of ranges that extend in an east-west direction and forms the northern edge of the Deccan Plateau. In the extreme west is the Satpuda Range occupying the area between Narmada and Tapi rivers. Satpuda Range starts from eastern Gujarat and extends eastward for a distance of 800 kilometers. Its continuity is broken in the central part and this gap provides an access to North India. It is popularly known as Burhanpur Gap. The hilltops are more or less in the form of plateaus of varying sizes rising to a height of 700 meters with a few hills reaching over 900 meters. The eastern extension of the Satpudas can be seen in the form of Mahadev and Maikal ranges situated in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh respectively. The Maikal range extends roughly in a north-south direction and forms a divide between Narmada and Mahanadi river basins. Three major river systems Narmada, Mahanadi and Van Ganga collect their headwaters from this hill complex. 2. Maharashtra Plateau The northwestern part of the Deccan Plateau is known as the Maharashtra Plateau. The western limit of this plateau is marked by the western Ghats. The basalt rocks of this region 
are formed by lava that outpoured from a number of fissures and spread over the region. The maximum thickness of this basalt is supposed to be around 2 kilometers. Due to the horizontal nature of basalt rocks, the entire region has an appearance of a series of flatlands placed at different heights. The hilltops in Maharashtra Plateau are generally flat. The altitude of the plateau ranges from 400 meters to 600 meters. The northern portion of this plateau is occupied by Tapi Basin that slopes in a westward direction. Rest of the plateau line south of Tapi Basin gently slopes in an eastward direction and forms the upper portion of Godavari and Krishna basins. A number of offshoots from the western Ghat run in a west to east direction and form the divisions between different river basins. The eastern portion of Maharashtra plateau is occupied by Vardha Van Ganga basin. These rivers flow roughly in a north-south direction. Three, Karnataka Telangana Plateau. The Karnataka Telangana Plateau is the southernmost part of Deccan Plateau. It covers a large portion of the Deccan Plateau. It is a region of crystalline rocks, mainly granite and granitic nis as well as metamorphic forms of some sedimentary formations. The area comprises of parts of Godavari and Krishna Basin in the north and Kaveri Basin in the south. We can consider these two extensive areas as separate plateau regions. The plateau is also spotted with a number of low and rounded granitic hills. In Karnataka, the plateau is called as Maidan. The Maidan has an average altitude of 400 meters. The plateau is characterized by a number of low hills that separate the basins of various rivers. The general direction of the slope of the plateau is from west to east. The Telangana plateau is located along the eastern and the northeastern side of Karnataka Plateau. The eastern ghats form the eastern boundary of this region. The region is flat with a few scattered, isolated, dome-shaped hills. The average elevation of the area ranges between 300 meters and 600 meters. 4. The Eastern Plateau This comprises of three sub-regions, namely Mahanadi Basin, Dandak Aranya and Garjat Hills. We shall seek some information about each of these sub-regions. Mahanadi Basin The area to the south of Chota Nagpur Plateau is relatively a low-lying region and is surrounded by hill ranges or plateaus. It occupies central part of Chhattisgarh state and western part of Odisha state. The Maikal range forms its western boundary while the eastern ghats form the eastern limit of this region. The Dandak Aranya plateau is located to the south of this region. The surrounding plateaus or hill ranges have an average height of 500 meters whereas the low-lying areas has the height of around 300 meters. The land slopes towards the east. Garjat Hills These hills occupy the northwestern part of Odisha. 
The region is drained by rivers Brahmani and Baitarni. Dandak Aranya The southern part of Chhattisgarh state and southwestern part of Odisha is known as Dandak Aranya. The central portion of Dandak Aranya is a high rising plateau with altitude ranging between 700 meters to 800 meters. The plateau is practically divided into two halves by the east-west following Indravati river. The Dandak Aranya area is known for its rich iron ore deposits. 7.2 Climate Peninsular Plateau region has a large variation in climate due to its vast size. Most part of the plateau of Peninsula India enjoys tropical wet and dry climate except a semi-arid tract to east of Western Ghats. Winter and early summer are long dry periods with temperature above 18 degrees Celsius. Summer is very hot and the temperature in the interior areas can rise above 45 degrees Celsius. The rainy season is from June to September and the annual rainfall is between 700 millimeters and 1500 millimeters. Only eastern Tamil Nadu receives rainfall during winters due to northeast monsoons. A middle part of this plateau experiences tropical semi-arid climate. It includes Karnataka, interior and western Tamil Nadu, western Andhra Pradesh and central Maharashtra. This region is a famine prone zone with very unreliable rainfall which varies between 400 mm to 750 mm annually. The months of March to May are hot and dry with mean monthly temperature of around 32 degrees Celsius. Seven point three soils. Black soil is well developed in the Deccan Plateau region of Maharashtra. These soils are especially suitable for cotton and sugarcane. Red soil is found in Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Karnataka Plateau. Seven point four. Natural Vegetation and Animal Life Varied topography and other physical features of the Deccan Plateau have rich variety of forests. Tropical Evergreen Tropical Moist Deciduous Tropical Dry Deciduous and Thorny Scrub Forests are found in this region. Tropical evergreen forests are limited. Teak, Sal, Shisham, Sandalwood, Kher, Harda and Arjun are some of the trees found here. Sandalwood has a very high commercial value. Due to pressure from population, agriculture and mining, Forests are being depleted. A variety of grazing animals from the four horned antelope and black buck to a gore and wild buffalo are found here. Other important animals are the tigers, wild dogs, sloth bear, and other carnivores. In total, the area is home to many mammals. Some of the larger species mentioned here are rare. The Indian giant squirrel is endangered. The 300 species of birds include the globally threatened Jordan Corsair. 
7.5 Population and Settlement The Deccan is home to many languages and people. Bhil and Gon people live in the hills along the northern and the northeastern edges of the plateau and speak various languages. Marathi is the main language of the northwestern Deccan in the state of Maharashtra. Telugu and Kannada are the predominant languages of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka respectively. Tamil is the main language of Tamil Nadu to the south of the plateau and Malayalam is found to the southwest of the plateau. The city of Hyderabad is an important center of Urdu language in the Deccan. The large cities in the Deccan are Hyderabad and Bengaluru. Other major cities include Mysore in Karnataka, Coimbatore in Salem in Tamil Nadu, Pune, Nagpur, Nanded, and Aurangabad in Maharashtra. The plateau region of Maharashtra has favored the growth of clustered settlements owing to its rich soils, good water supply, and developed agriculture. Dispersed settlements are also seen in the plateau region because of its rough and undulating terrain. Widely spaced villages are the characteristic features of the northern Maidan of Karnataka and Rayal Seema area of Andhra Pradesh. The track between the Kaveri and the Tungabhadra has numerous tanks. This exhibits close relationship with the compact settlements. In Malinar area, scattered hamlets are a common feature. The same features are also replicated in Tamil Nadu uplands. Bharatnatyam dance form is the cultural heritage of Tamil Nadu. Seven point six Economic Development Agriculture The chief crops of the Deccan Plateau are cotton, sugarcane and rice. Rice is predominantly grown in the eastern part of Deccan Plateau, whereas wheat is produced in the northern part. Jawar, cotton, sugarcane and oil seeds are grown mostly in Maharashtra Plateau, whereas bajra is predominant in the western part of the Deccan Plateau. Pulses grow in the northern part of this plateau. Lakes constitute the backbone of irrigation in Bandhara. It is crucial for sugar and rice cultivation. Bandhara are check dams or diversions weirs built across rivers. Their presence raises the water level of the rivers so that it begins to flow into channels. They are also used to impound water and form a large reservoir. In regions where a bandhara is built across a small stream, the water supply usually lasts for a few months after the rains. Tanks called keri in Kannada are the predominant traditional method of irrigation in the central Karnataka plateau and are fed by channels branching off from streams and valleys. The outflow of one tank supplies water to the next tank. The tanks are built in a series, usually situated a few kilometers apart. This ensures no wastage through overflow and the seepage of tank higher up in the series would be collected in the next lower one. Since agriculture is main occupation in the region, 
Irrigation plays a significant role in obtaining increased yields from the land. Mining The plateau is richly endowed with various minerals of industrial importance like manganese, coal, iron ore, limestone, copper, bauxite, silica, sand, chromite, china clay and common salt. These minerals are found in substantial quantities on the plateau of Maharashtra, Karnataka and Telangana. Bituminous coal is found in the districts of Bandhara, Nagpur and Chandrapur. Karnataka is one of the main gold producing states in the country. Industry Deccan Plateau is an industrially well developed region. Maharashtra is one of the most industrialized state in the country. Cotton textile industry is the largest and the oldest industry in the state. This plateau has many industries like sugar, automobiles, electronics and food processing. The Karnataka and Telangana plateau are rich in mineral resources. Important minerals are high grade iron ore, copper, manganese, chromite, china clay and limestone. The state has rich deposits of granite. This plateau has many industries like machine tools, electronic products, telecommunication equipment, etc. Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Pune have become hubs of IT industry. Transportation This plateau region has a well-developed network of roads and railways. There are a number of highways which connect this region to other parts of the country. There are many national and international airports which connect various industrial and commercial centers of the country. Bengaluru, Hyderabad and Nagpur are the important international airports of the region. Tourism Deccan Plateau has many tourist places of natural, cultural, historical and religious importance. Bengaluru and Hyderabad are famous for their gardens. There are many historical places like Aurangabad, Bidar, Bijapur, Mysore, Pune, etc. Besides these, there are many tourist centers on this plateau region such as Tulzapur, Pandharpur, Shirdi, Gulbarga, Tirumala and Madurai that attract people from all over the world. Seven point seven natural hazards and environmental problems. Mining activities are being done on a large scale in this plateau region and these mining activities lead to water and soil pollution. After the extraction of minerals, the mining areas become useless for any other purpose. A large number of industries have come up in this region causing air, water and soil pollution. The western part of the plateau region is an earthquake prone region. The Lathur earthquake which occurred in the year 1993 killed many people and destroyed their properties. 
Koyna region is also prone to earthquakes.